The Mass Hall diagram gives you quick qualitative information about cut and fill volumes and earthwork movements. It is a graphic representation of accumulated volume at any station. The value is the accumulated cut volume minus the accumulated fill volume up to that point. The difference in mass hall between two points indicates the volume of surplus, a positive difference, or deficit, negative difference. Okay, so let's go take a look at how to work with the mass hall graphic within RoadEng. This is our easy to use road and site design software. Shown here on the screen is a rural divided highway. It's approximately 10 kilometers long. And uh, we've got it shown here right now in the plan view. Now before this demonstration, we actually went ahead and designed a preliminary horizontal and vertical alignment. And we're going to be working from those. Okay, first things first, let's bring up our profile window. So as I said, we already have a designed alignment that's actually shown here as the red dotted line. Our ground surface, or our original ground, is shown here in black. To activate or display the mass hall graphic, what we can do is we can right click, select profile options, and here in our sub window section, we can go ahead and select the mass hall. So our most basic mass hall graphic is displayed here. We've just got our cumulative earthworks being displayed as the moving line as well as our zero line or, or our balance line as we like to call it. Um, you can see that here throughout the total design we actually end up borrowing, needing to borrow at the end of it, about 41,000 cubic meters of materials. As we make changes to our design, this mass hall graphic on the bottom is going to update. So just get make sure I'm in my add edit tool here. Um, and if we want to try to not have to borrow so much, we can just make a little adjustments here. And you can see now, instead of having to borrow materials at the end of the design, we actually now have a surplus of 33,000 cubic meters of waste. Now to get a little bit more detail from our mass hall, we're able to turn on something that we call our different classes of movement. If we go here into our mass hall options, um, we've got four different classes of movement that we can activate through our advanced mass hall options. First off, free hall. We've defined it as anything less than 100 meters. Overhaul is being defined as anything between 100 meters and less than 500 meters. And end haul, which essentially becomes waste, is defined as anything greater than our overhaul distance of 500. Each of these different mass haul options can be configured to be displayed in a different color. For example, free haul, shown here in green, overhaul, shown in yellow with a particular hatch style, borrow in blue, waste in red. So with these different options, um, we can now see a little bit more detail about what is happening in our mass hall. Okay, now as you noticed, as I move within my profile window, the ma scale of my mass hall is going to adjust. So moving towards the end of the design, and in a little bit, the my mass hall scale has adjusted. However, what it's displaying is remaining the same. So still, right now, as it currently stands with this design, we have a waste of about 34,000 cubic meters. Okay, so we can continue editing our vertical alignment here um, in order to get our mass hall to a place that we want it to be. Um, the goal of most road design is to get an internally balancing road. Um, so we can keep making little adjustments. Uh, as we go, you can see I've improved a little bit here. Uh, there are two other tools that we can use to help us balance our road. The first of which is to add uh, borrow and waste sites or pits uh, along our alignment. So we do that by going to our home tab, select assign by range, uh, and you can select the pits tab. Here, we're able to add uh, at the end of alignment, uh, we can add uh, you know a borrow waste, a borrow pit or a waste pit. Um, so we can add that. And let's add, uh, so we've now got uh, a variable volume borrow pit as well as a variable volume waste pit at the end of our alignment. If we recalculate our design, we'll be able to see here in a second uh, that yes, we have an internally balanced design. Um, 
we actually were in relatively good shape before that with only 7,200 um, cubic meters of borrow. But uh, yeah, we were able to borrow that last little bit um, and to get our road to be balanced. The other tool that we have available to us is something called alignment optimization. Uh, and with this, we can get uh, our road to have an automatically balanced mass haul, either internally as well as through pits. Um, alignment optimization is done through an add-on within our road edge program uh, called Soft3 Optimal. And it has some major other features and functions that go with it as well, including being able to create the lowest possible cost of vertical alignment. So it does minimize the cuts and fills throughout the design, so it's not just looking to balance it, it is looking to minimize them as well as their movement costs. So a very powerful tool, and we're going to go take a look at adding one to this design right now. So here we've got our alignment properties panel. And with this, uh, we're able to add an, a new vertical alignment. Uh, and it brings us up with our vertical optimization options. Let's just give this one a name. We're going to call this one uh, Balance. Um, within here, you have an ability to select a whole bunch of different things, which truthfully are beyond the extent of this video, but just know you've got a whole bunch of selection options. You can set constraints. You've got your you know min and max grades. We'll set those here. Uh, as well as our min and max um, K values, so our sag and crest. Just update those here to match our road class specifications. So we've got uh, min and max grades of minus 5 plus 5, sag and crest. Uh, and then what we also want to do is just select, um, yeah, tell it, tell it how many curves it's allowed to put in. So for this design, we're going to set our minimum curve length to be 50 uh, and our minimum tangent length to be 100. So from there, all we need to do is go ahead and optimize it. So we're going to press the process button here and let it go. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes uh, and we do have uh, a really good alignment found. Um, with optimization, it can take a little bit of time, in particular for long roads. Uh, this road that we've got, we are demoing is 10 kilometers. So, uh, yeah, 10 minutes uh, to create uh, 10 kilometers worth of, a, of an optimal vertical profile. Our optimality gap is still going down, so we're at 2.8% uh, currently, but we are able to cancel out of this uh, if, if we're happy with how close it is. We've got a cost for our road, and it has been successfully balanced. So now if we go and we set uh, our new alignment and we set it to current here, we can see in our mass hall, if we go through over here to the end, uh, we can see that we have achieved an internally balanced road. So that's just one way that you can er automatically and internally balance your road's mass hall diagram. Thanks for watching this Soft Tree support video and we hope you found it useful. Mm -hmm.